Mocking out server-side requests is really important and can be really hard as well. There are many tools such as Playwright and Cypress that mock out the client-side API requests, especially when doing automated testing. But what about server-side API requests? And why would we want to mock out server-side API requests in the first place? Well, here are a few reasons why you may want to mock out server-side API requests. One is to be able to work offline. Two is not not worry about third-party rate limits while developing as you're refreshing that page constantly and hitting the live third-party API. The third reason is boundary conditions for automated testing. Maybe we want different responses or even manual testing. We want to see what different results look like. Also, OAuth providers logging in and authenticating. We don't want to keep logging in to a third party. We want to kind of mock that out and just have it work. We want to develop locally and offline. Despite all these reasons and benefits though, it was difficult to find examples of how to achieve mocking out server-side API requests. There were some examples that were either specific to a library, for example, Octokit, but then this would leave my project having so many different implementations of trying to solve the same project for each library that I was using. Is there a way I can intercept all server-side RESTful API requests and mock them out in the exact same way, regardless of what API I'm calling or what library or SDK I'm using? For those of you who want the short answer, the answer is yes. In this video, we're going to create an example Next.js app from scratch that will query GitHub's API on the server side for real data. Then I'll introduce a library called MSWJS. Let me know if you've heard about that before in the comments below. And while you're down there, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And this library, MSWJS, will allow me to create a JSON file to return a customized response for the GitHub API request. Those of you wondering what MSWJS stands for, it's Mock Service Worker. You might be surprised to hear that there isn't much code required to make this happen. Actually, there's more code in the JSON response that we're going to use to mock out. But there is a small tricky part, which is integrating MSW library with the Next.js project. But this is possible with an experimental feature in Next.js called instrumentation, which I will talk about later on in this blog. So firstly, let's create a Next.js app using the typical command that we use, which is is mpx create next app latest. I'm going to give it the name MSWJS video. Follow the on screen prompts. I'm going to select mine for this video, but you can choose the ones that you want. It's asking me here for a password because I signed my git commits. I've got plenty of video and content on that. Go check it out. I highly recommend it. That's going to be the initial commit. Let's navigate into our new directory. And as you can see, I already have uh, one commit there, which the Next.js Create app created for us. Next thing we want to do, let's uh, run the app and just make sure all is working fine. So npm run dev, and we can then navigate to localhost 3000. And we can see the example app. So the next thing we want to do, let's clear out some of this example code and let's go straight away and call the GitHub API using fetch. But you can also use Octokit. There are lots of ways you can do this, lots of libraries, and they will all work in the same way with MSWJS. Let's go into the source directory and we'll go straight to page and we will delete all of this that we don't need at the moment. There we go, and we can just create a div and we can say hello world as you usually do and let's run the app and then we should see on the right change here we go you can see it says hello world so let's get some data from github so this is a server side component which is great we're going to leave it as that and we can make a request so what we can do is we can say const res uh, wait, and we will want to make this an async function, which we can do for server side components. And we will say fetch, and we'll make a fetch, a get fetch by default to api.github.com forward slash users Eddie Jald. And you can actually copy and paste that into the browser, and you will see it will work. And we're going to need this JavaScript later on as well. So let's leave that open for the moment. And then what we need to do next is create another constant, we'll say data, and we will 
await and you can see uh, GitLab Duo is auto completing for us and even put in a console log. So let's just hit save. Let's refresh the page and you can see in the terminal, the JavaScript actually matches your login and ID actually matches what we got in the browser as well. This is public information. So that's all working really, really well. So we can, you know, get rid of the console log. We don't need that. But let's display the data on the UI to make it a bit easier for us to see when we're using real data and when we're mocking out data. And you can see GitLab Duo is auto completing for us. So let me just hit save and we can see it has my name and it has my profile picture. And I think that looks great. We can even try and do a, a refactor. Let's make this full screen for the moment and have a look and see what suggestion it's giving us. It explains the suggestions. But that's, now it's actually using some Tailwind. So let's uh, let's have a look. Let's just see how that looks, if that looks any better. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So we'll leave it how that is for the moment. So thank you very much. And we should use Next.js image. Yes, absolutely, I agree. But for now, we can keep it simple. Let's move this back to the side. Right, let's get into the exciting part, which I know you're waiting for, which is the mocking out. And remember, this is a real request. This is going to match exactly what we get from GitHub's API. But so we want to mock that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mock directory and we're going to create a data folder. And then here we can say user JSON and I'm going to copy this JSON and I'm going to paste it in here. But what I'm going to do is to prove that when we use this JSON, we don't want the exact same result because we don't know if it's real or not without any logging. But what we can do is we can actually go down to where it says my name, Eddie Jowd, because we're displaying that on the UI. We could just put mock in brackets. So when we're using this JSON file to mock the response, our application thinks it's making a real request though, bear that in mind, then uh, we'll know that it's coming through with mock data. And this is super helpful when we don't have internet or we're running automated tests and we don't want to hit the rate limit of GitHub API or we want different results for our automated testing. So MSW to the rescue. From MSW's website, this is what they say, mocking service worker MSW. It's an API mocking library for the browser and Node.js. Remember, Node.js is a lot harder to mock the server side. And with MSW, you can intercept outgoing requests, observe them and respond to them using mock responses. So let's just get started and install. So let's stop the application for a moment and we'll do npm install MSW at latest and we'll save it as a de development dependency. Okay, that's completed. Let's create in the mock directory a handlers file where we can actually specify all the uh, URLs we want to catch and what we want to return. So let's just say handlers.js. In fact, we can make this a bit smaller, give us a little bit more real estate over here. And here we'll import HTTP and also HTTP response from msw we'll also import the json that we created that we copied and pasted from github's api but we just changed the name so we could visually see it so we will say data user and here we're going to export the const handlers and it's going to be an array so a collection and inside that we are going to return what we want to mock out. So let's first of all do a get. There are, you can do post, you can do all sorts of awesome things. You can change the response status codes. There are so many things that you can do. And here we're gonna say, let's mock out. And you can also use wildcard and regexes and there's so many things you can do, but I wanna be super, super specific. And it's uh, almost auto completed for us. Here we go, no, it's gonna API GitHub. There we go, mock out my user. And we could also put a star here if we wanted to, to mock out every user to always return the, the same one. So there's you know, a variety of ways of, of doing it. And for the second parameter, you can also grab the request, the parameters and the cookie. I think in this situation, we actually don't need any of those, um, but we're just gonna return the HTTP response and we're gonna say it's JSON and we're gonna return the user JSON. And so that's it, so let's hit save. And I think we, that's good to go. So we need to create one more file, which we're gonna call node.js in the mock directory. 
we'll say no to .js. And if you're gonna do browser mocking, you will create a browser one as well and have slightly different code in there. This is gonna be quite straightforward and quite simple. Um, we're just going to kind of join the dots, let's say. So we're gonna import setup server and we're gonna uh, import that from MSW node. And then we wanna import our handlers as well that we just created. And the next thing we wanna do is export a const server and we're gonna call setup server that we just imported above and we're gonna pass in handlers. There we go. That's almost it. We do need to run this file within our app, which is literally like kind of one or two lines, literally server.listen. But where do we put that in our Next.js app? I think that is quite tricky, but it's not but it is at the beginning because it's an experimental feature and the experimental feature is instrumentation. And after lots of research, this was the recommended way to integrate it into a Next.js that's using the app router. So in the root of the source directory, we need to create a file called instrumentation. Instrumentation.js. And then here we'll need to export async function register. And in here, we we'll wanna say if we are in the runtime of Node.js, then run this, otherwise we'll get some errors. So here we can say const server away import mock, there we go, and then node. And then we can run the server, we can say server.listen. And say that this is not gonna work, it's not gonna run yet. We need to enable it. So we can go to the next config and we can enable this by adding experimental. And then the feature we want to enable is instrumentation hook true and hit save. From the Next.js documentation, instrumentation is the process of using code to integrate monitoring and logging tools into your application. This allows you to track performance and behavior of your application uh, to debug issues in production. So now we can run the app. We are actually done. So we could say npm run dev, what are you expecting to change? Well, the picture will be the same, the profile picture of me, but we are expecting the name to say mock. And what I really like about uh, MSW, the items that aren't intercepted, it does say, it does say we're not intercepting these uh, values. And I think that's uh, really, really good to, to see that. So it's super, super interesting. So we definitely know that we are running MSW. And now you can see we have mock at the end of the name. I need to stop and start the app because I made changes and it didn't look like it got reloaded. And it's really interesting. You will see Next.js sending off like kind of information and analytics back uh, on your behalf if you leave it open long enough. So it's super interesting to see what is being sent. So hopefully that helps you mock out third party API requests on your server side. And also you can do OAuth mocking as well. So if you'd like to see a video on that and a blog post, then don't forget to give this a thumbs up and comment below and let me know as well. And if you would like to read the blog version of this, there is a link in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my Substack where I write blog posts every week as well. I'll see you there.